Sometimes I solve problems that I don't set out to solve. I just stumble across the solution. Like foreskin, like sexual well-being, I just kind of stumbled across it. But in the pursuit of foreskin regeneration. So I, didn't sat I haven't satisfied my goal of regenerating the foreskin in a manner that is acceptable to myself. Um, as opposed to just cutting off my penis, you know. And <laughs> I don't want to go there. But that would... That's the protocol that uh, Becker suggests, or poking holes and making it bleed. Um, so instead, I've stumbled across some uh, kind of a minor substitute, or not a substitute, well, something less than what I was ex hoping for, and that's a replacement for the foreskin, a functional replacement. Um, now, I've tend sometimes, or I used to have more often headaches, Without pursuing uh, the topic of headaches, I've managed to stumble across the solution to headaches. And oddly enough, beeswax is a solution. Silver kind of helps, but beeswax does even better all by itself. And blending melted beeswax, edible beeswax, good quality beeswax with uh, vegetable oil, um, either a liquid or, or a non-liquid variety. You know, the non-liquid at room temperature being butter or coconut oil. In any case, oil blended with beeswax makes it even more acceptable um, to consume because it won't stick to your teeth at that point. And you get the oil, you know, if you want oil in your diet. It's just a little waxy oil. <laughs> They're very chemically similar, and so they blend very nicely. Um... So I've solved the problem of headaches, and I hated the headaches I used to get. Oh, my God. And beeswax solves the problem. Well, I'm laying on my tummy. I'm kind of out because my back, we say it's thrown out, but what it really is, it's, it's an injury. And it's a muscle spasm and a weak muscle. And when it spasms, it pulls and injures the muscle, and it, oh God, the pain is so unbear un uncanny. Well, I don't have a solution for it, and I don't have a clue. But some things I solve simply because I stumble across the answer, not because I actually try to solve the problem. Um, so I don't have a solution for back pain, for back injury. I just don't know. I haven't a clue how to deal with that. Um... But headaches, hey, I have no more a problem with headaches. Beeswax, yay! <laughs> so I don't know, whatever. <laughs> At least I try, or I hope. Boy, it would be nice not to... And then I've got another... No I notice another thing going on. It's um, My sinuses are clogged, and I'm having difficulty breathing through them. Um, but... I did solve another problem recently, and I added salt to my drinking water, sea salt, and I vary it. I use a pitcher, a glass pitcher, and I put in to taste how much I think is the right amount to try to be somewhat consistent from one glass full to the next and not vary it too much. And it's not too much, but it's not too little. If I put in too little, it doesn't do it doesn't get me interested in drinking. I have a problem being interested in drinking and a problem being interested in eating. Due to antifreeze poisoning 13 years ago, you can very easily put yourself out and lose interest in food and, and drink. Uh, I saw that in my cats as they were dying. And it's, you know, cancer is the biggest problem with antifreeze poisoning. And it, when you have cancer of the blood, it seems to affect, you know, leukemia if, or the liver or the pancreas. It seems to affect your your desire, your motivation to eat or drink. So putting sea salt in drinking water has really helped. And then my motivation to eat, I'm noticing chocolate actually helps. So, uh, and, and one of my favorites is hot cocoa, a hot cocoa mix. Um, dairy doesn't help me eat dairy products, you know, at first, but then it doesn't. So I need something consistent that I can use on a consistent basis. And salted water, drinking water, just might do the job. Because my body needs salt and it needs it very badly. Um, since the antifreeze poisoning, my 
hunger for salt has skyrocketed, but I don't I haven't increased my consumption of salt. So putting salt in drinking water helps not only to help me drink water, but it helps me uh, be in a mental state in which I readily will think about salting, heavily salting my food. And that helps. It keeps my meals simple and lightweight. If it's not a sweet meal like granola, I'm not going to put salt on granola, obviously, but if I have something like rice and beans, then bring on the salt. And I notice I want something else with rice and beans besides salt. I want oil. So that's why um, I think my mixture of oil and beeswax will be very highly suitable to have with such a uh, meal because I am supposed to have beeswax at least once a day um, to help settle my tummy because it helps settle my stomach and reduce the likelihood of cramping, which is another problem I used to have a lot of. And beeswax helps in that regard. It helps with um, cramps, stomach cramps. Um, now, usually, I would have to take calcium to alleviate problems associated with acidity in my intestinal tract. But as it turns out, salted drinking water takes care of that very nicely, and so I'm finding I don't take calcium or even magnesium anymore. Um because I'm using sea salt, which is rich in um, magnesium. So I still have a problem of back pain, back injury, and largely that's a problem of distension of the lower belly due to constipation. So I have been constipated of late, and that's been a problem. Um, and not a problem I understand how to solve. I thought I uh, knew how to solve it by eating sauerkraut, but then I got tired of sauerkraut. I was like, ugh, what is, this stuff is weird. It's spoiled vegetables. <laughs> I don't like this. Well, it's not exactly spoiled, but it, it's not fresh, let's put it that way. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of fermented foods. Um, I like fresh foods. So how do you take care of... Um, constipation without taking an herbal laxative or doing enemas or having to take a bath in Epsom salt. Um, I don't know. So that's another, I've got two, well, back pain is, is the result of constipation uh, plus a weak back muscles and anxiety. <laughs> so i got a few problems still I have left to resolve a solution for um, but I've solved a lot of my other problems, and it's so cool, you know, it's really cool. So I guess when you get old, things happen, things come to you, and, you, and things that didn't come to you when you were younger, maybe because you didn't need to have those things come to you, or you just were not capable of having things come to you so readily. You know, obviously other things don't come to me, like money, <laughs> or good health. Um, so i got to work at good health, I've got to I can't take youth for granted because I don't have it. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> um, and gray hair is definitely an indication of frailty, vulnerability, to the onset of old age and all of the things that come with it. Um, yeah, I think that's about everything. <laughs> so if you've got any ideas about back pain and, con and constipation and distension of the lower belly, you know, in due to an impacted uh, colon, let me know. Because, um, I don't know, those uh, topics I try to, s to not engage in, such as enemas and herbal laxatives and uh, magnesium supplementation, it's just, they don't work. I don't know, I wish they did. I wonder if gravity boots solves uh, the problem. Hanging by your feet. Not that I have a set of gravity boots or the contraption to attach them to, but um, actually, you know, it comes close. Is an inclined plane. You know, like a wooden board, you set it up at an angle and then you lay on it with your head pointing down. And that comes kind of close to gravity boots now that I think of it. So, what I need is a board, a wooden board. Or uh, it could be plastic or metal, um, but it has to be a long board. I have a long shelving, but I'm using them 
on a utility rack. Hmm. Um. You know what? Um. You know what could work is a mattress. Two mattresses, one set on top of another, and the second one is half on the other and half off, and so it's at an angle. Not exact, and then you, you'd ha I'd still have to put something underneath to support the middle of that mattress to keep it from sagging, but I don't, actually, I don't have it, but maybe I could use somebody else's now that I think of it. But I'd have to stay in that position, like sleep in that position at night. Which, you know, is not the safest thing to do, to have blood rushing to your head for a few hours every night. Maybe I'd have to limit the time I spend up, uh, upside down or mildly upside down. But i got to do something about an impacted colon. Maybe gravity is the problem. Yeah. No, it's, it should be obvious. It should have been obvious that gravity is the problem. So how do you... Oh my goodness, you know what offsets gravity is electrostatics. And I have a negative ion generator, it's just the problem is the power unit, the wall outlet um, adapter, keeps burning out. Oh, instead of putting the plate on the bottom of my feet, which is what it was designed for, I should be putting it on my lower belly, below the belly button. Because that's where the distension is. Electrostatics do the Searle effect, S-E-A-R-L-E. If you go back to the old historical narrative of the Searle effect, not Searle's version, which is a bit of a lie. <laughs> if you go online, he'll say, well, it's electromagnetics. No, it's not. It's electrostatics. You have to go to Cater, Joseph Cater, in his book, The Awesome Life Force, who gives you the original version of the Searle effect around 1950, which is electrostatics inducing levitation, which is what Marvin Cole produced in his version of the E.V. Gray motor that he was working on in the late 60s and early 70s. Um, so if I do that on my, apply electrostatics to my lower belly, I might solve the problem of constipation, lower belly distension, and the consequential back pain and back injury. Not applying it to the lower back, but to the lower belly. Electrostatics directly to the lower belly. And if I don't like 70,000 volts of this uh, negative ion generator, I could make my own negative, uh, uh, yeah, negative ion generator, because I've seen plans on the Internet. It's really very simple and straightforward, and so I, I could produce my, uh, make my own schematic design based on a lower voltage output than 70,000 volts, you know, like 20,000 volts, or even 5,000 volts. You know, something more mild, because 70,000 is pretty, is pretty extreme. So I've got diodes, now that I think of it, because it's basically a chain of diodes, and a few other components, and if I ran it off a AA battery, because it doesn't have to be running off of a high voltage, because I don't want it to produce high voltage anyway. I want it to be a more milder voltage, but it has to be a one-sided voltage to and sustained and something that won't burn out the, the energy source too quickly. So I'm happy I made this video. I, I talked through the problem and shared it with you because I've actually, I may have solved the problem. Something I could wear and it would put it where it needs it and, and possibly prevent lower back pain, constipation, and lower belly distension all rolled into one using electrostatics of all things, not electromagnetics, because I've, I've had, I have worked with cur um, non-existent current flow through the body, just voltage polarity, but this is a voltage monopole when you're dealing with an electrostatic device as opposed to a dipole. And I've never dealt with a monopole before, a biocircuit, a bionic uh, monopolar circuit you know, this this would be uh, out of my expertise, something I've never done before, and something I probably need to learn how to do when I think about it. So this, I thought I was finished. Uh, no more research. Hmm, I just came up with something. <laughs> yeah, because this is a real problem. It's a nightmare to have back pain. Shit. Oh, God. 
I was watching a movie the other night about a butler in the White House over several administrations, and one of them was JFK. And JFK is, is, is laying, you know, the actor is laying on the floor, and the butler gives him a pill. God, is that all you can hope for? <laughs> With back pain is a pill? That's no, that's nothing to hope for. It's got to be something better than that. Because <laughs> you're still in pain. It's just the pill is there to kill the pain, but you still have the injury that creates the pain. So how do you avoid the injury altogether in the first place? That way you don't have to kill the pain, because there is none. So actually, I may have come upon a solution that just might be doable. I mean, something I can do. You know, maybe it's not something you would want to do yourself, but, hey, I don't mind working with electricity if it's something simple, something mild, and something bionic. You know, I don't mind. The bionic man. <laughs> you, you may be too young, some of you, f uh, to be old enough to know that TV series uh, from the 1980s. But, um, not exactly a cyborg, but uh, kind of getting there in that direction. <laughs> Um, or you could say he was a cyborg. A cyborg sounds kind of extreme. Yeah, cyborg is a little extreme. But then the bionic man t was a little extreme, too, because he was literally a superhero. He, he had such a strong body due to the bionics uh, built into his body. Anywho, um, and so that's what I'm probably looking at, is a therapeutic device to help prevent back injury constipation and lower belly distension because all three are my problem that I'm suffering through at the moment. So this is great. Thank you very much YouTube f audience for being there, for giving me a... whether or not you're my subscriber, I don't, it doesn't matter. Just being there is, gives me an excuse to talk and in the course of talking I actually solve problems I couldn't have solved otherwise had I not talked about it. It's beautiful. Talking it must be a yagya. It, must, it certainly generates grace for me. The more I talk, the more problems I solve. I'm not working on pr the problem of solving money because I uh, flow because I don't know how to solve that problem. So I don't even bother trying. Um, I don't know if I should, if it's really my dharma to uh, make money. Um, so, whatever. I solve other problems instead like <laughs> that are more practical. In a sense, to me, health is a really practical problem. Ever since birth, I've had health problems, and I've acquired a few I didn't have at, at, at the starting block. So, um, back pain is not something I had when I was a kid or a young adult, so um, now I get to focus on that problem. Okay, so now i got to get to work. <laughs>